what's up? Generally, I'm not that enthusiastic about vegetables trying to be meat. I really like the way vegetables taste as is, and I would prefer to eat them not mushed into a patty or a nugget. So with that in mind today, I'm gonna show you how to showcase the lowly humble cauliflower in a way that's deeply craveable and unapologetically tastes like a vegetable. I mean, it is gonna be fried and smothered in butter, but you're gonna know there's cauliflower in there. To get started, I'll need a big old head of cauliflower. This one weighs about two pounds and it's gonna make enough cauli wings for six to eight people to nosh on. Using a paring knife, I'm gonna cut around the stem end to get into the core so that I can remove it. Don't go too deep here because we wanna keep some of that core intact to help hold the base of the florets together. Next, I'll set up this head on its base and then cut it pole to pole in half. I'll cut those halves into quarters and then I'll cut those quarters into eighths. I find that cutting the cauli this way gives me the best yield and Overall, it gives me the least amount of crumbly bits. To break down this eighth of a collie into friable pieces, I'm gonna use my chef's knife and cut it into two inch size chunks, give or take. I really try to leave some stem end on each piece to help avoid excessive crumbliness. Once I've got this entire head broken down, I'll scoop the largest pieces off the top and put them into a high sided container. Scooping these chunks off of the top like this allows all of the crumbly bits to sink to the bottom on the cutting board. Those tiny bits would take forever to hand bread and fry, so I'm gonna scoop them into a bowl and save them for a weeknight roast up sometime soon. If there's any very large pieces of cauliflower left over, like this one, make sure to snap those down into something that's more in the three to four bite range. Next, I'll grab a medium large saucepan and drop it on the stove. Into that, I'll I'll add 2,000 grams or milliliters of water, then 250 grams of white distilled vinegar, 50 grams of salt, and 20 grams of sugar. I'll give that a whisk to dissolve and bring it up to a ripping boil. I'll mention that this is essentially a low acid pickle brine, and I'm using it for two things. Number one, I'm looking to season this collie with acidity and salt throughout. Number two, I'm gonna use it to par cook the collie so that it's perfectly tender after only a few minutes in the fryer. Once my brine is at a full on boil, I'll snatch it off the stove and pour it over the raw florets we just cut all the way to the top and then I'll grab something to both cover the collie and keep it fully submerged. In this case, I'm using a second four quart container, but get creative with whatever lid type thing you might have. I'll let it marinate and cook here on the counter for one hour. One hour later, when I come back, this collie is still warm, but not hot, and texturally it's softened by roughly 15 to 20%. Next, I'll take this over to the sink to drain off that pickling liquid, and here's a quick POV of the texture of this stuff. You can see it's bendy, but not floppy or mushy, and it's got a little acidity and salt going on in there from that quick pickle. Next, I'm gonna set this up on a little baby sheet tray with some paper towel, and then I'll quickly dab off any excessive moisture that might be clinging to the outside. Once these are dry, I'll set them aside and then grab a medium bowl and into that add 500 grams of buttermilk and 40 grams of Frank's hot sauce or whatever hot sauce you prefer. Then I'll jump in with a whisk and stir it to combine. This is gonna be the first part of my breading setup. The second is gonna be in a second bowl. Into that bowl, I'll combine 350 grams of all-purpose flour, 350 grams of rice flour, then in goes seven grams of salt, seven grams of baking powder, five to six grams of black pepper, and five to six grams of paprika. I'll whisk that to combine, and then I'll add in half of my cauliflorets. Another benefit to lightly pickling these is that they're a little bit softer and moister than raw plant material, and that grips the flour dredge a lot better. Once they're all tossed up to coat, take a closer look. They're just dusted up at this point, but not caked. Excessive flour in here would end up thickening the buttermilk and that would make things gloppy and hard to bread. Next, I'll scoop out the rest of these florets while shaking off as much excessive flour from them as I can, and then I'll repeat the dredge with the second half of the collie. Once I have all of these dusted up like this, I'm gonna grab about half of them and drop them into my hot sauce buttermilk mixture. From there, I'll toss to get things evenly coated, and as you can see, that base flour layer really helps grip the milk. Now, using a slotted spoon, I'm gonna lift these florets out of the milk bath and then drop them into the dredge. I prefer to do this with a slotted spoon instead of my hands because breading stuff can be very messy and the name of the game here is keeping your hands dry. Once I've got all these florets in the flour along with whatever buttermilk they brought along, I'll grab some tongs and jump into the bowl to get those as evenly coated as I can. Allowing a little bit of the buttermilk to get into this flour actually is a good thing because it allows some small amount of that flour to hydrate 
hydrate and then stick to the cauliflower. Those little baby clumps of hydrated flour are essential to making something extra crispy. Once all these florets are well dusted, I'm gonna move them over to a little baby sheet tray while I move on to bread the rest. If you're wondering, I did mess around with a second round of breading on these just to see if I'd be missing out on anything. In my opinion, it's way too heavy and turns this into basically a cauliflower nugget. The breading to veg ratio here is like two to one at least, and that's just way too much. Once I've gotten the whole lot of cauliflower moved to this breading one time, I'm gonna grab my six and a half quart Dutch oven and drop it on the stove. Into that Dutchie, I'll add two to three quarts of high smoke point neutral oil. I'm using canola, but peanut, soybean, or even Crisco would work. While that oil heats, I'll take a second to scan my receipt for it to make sure I'm getting my points from the sponsor of today's video, Fetch Rewards. Fetch Rewards is an easy to use free app where you can earn rewards on literally everything you buy. Just scan all of your receipts into the app and then you can redeem those points for hundreds of reward options like Target, REI, or Amazon gift cards. Developing two recipe videos a week means that I'm at the grocery store like every single day, so I have a lot of receipts to scan. Luckily, Fetch doesn't just take receipts from big name retailers either. This one's from a local Italian market and same for as any other store. You just open the app, scan the receipt, and from there, Fetch reads the store, the total, and the date, and then you submit it and get the points right away. I also have Fetch linked to my email so that I can scan for e-receipts, so you're covered there. I've already banked like 10,000 points, which means I get a $10 gift card, but I'm going to be saving that for one of these specific travel rewards. There's a link in the description below so that you can download the app for free and then use my code Lagershum to get 3,000 points when you scan your first receipt. That's the equivalent of three free bucks towards tons of rewards. Again, use code Lagerstrom when you scan your first receipt for 3,000 extra points. The link is in the description. Thank you, Fetch Rewards. Hey, Bri, what about the buffalo part of this video? Well, while this fryer finishes coming up to temperature, I'm gonna make that real quick. Into a small saucepan on the stove, I'll measure 300 grams of Frank's hot sauce. By the way, I use Frank's because it's like the buffalo hot sauce in my opinion, but feel free to use whatever five alarm, ghost pepper, tough guy stuff you got on vacation. Behind the hot sauce comes 20 grams of wurch and 15 grams of minced garlic. Normally for buffalo sauce, I would also add in like 20 grams of white distilled vinegar, but since we've added some nice acidity in the kali from the pickling, we don't need that extra hit of zip. Now I'll bring this up to a simmer and then cook it down for about 10 to 15 minutes over medium low-ish heat or until it's reduced by about half. Next I'll add in a whole stick of cold butter, that's 115 grams worth, and I'll whisk that in over very low heat. This step is about more than just melting the butter. I'm whisking it constantly because that allows the butter to actually emulsify with the hot sauce and it creates a nice thick creamy viscosity. And that looks great. One thing I like to do from here though, to make this just a little bit thicker and a little bit easier to keep emulsified is to add just a little bit of xanthan gum. Xanthan gum is a thickener slash emulsifier slash stabilizer that we use in restaurants and it basically keeps things from separating. A little goes a very, very long way though, so just a tiny pinch here works best. Sub in a tablespoon of cornstarch slurry and bring it to a simmer if you don't have any xanthan gum. Once I've got my garlicky, savory buffalo sauce on tap, it's time to fry these veggies. My oil temp is holding steady at 3 50F 175C. So to get these cauliflowers into the oil, I'm gonna pile them up on my spider and then gently lower them into the oil in batches. Laying them in with the spider like this helps prevent any splashing and just overall makes it a lot faster. I'm dropping in half of my breaded cauliflowers, by the way. Once everything is in the oil, I'm gonna let these fry for about one minute, totally undisturbed. After that minute, I'll come back and very gently give these cauliflowers some nudging to make sure they're not stuck to each other or the bottom of the pot. That first 60 seconds is essential to make sure that that the breading is set up. If you went in there too early with the spider, you would remove the breading and expose the underlying cauliflower. Once these are all loosened up and floating free from each other, I'm gonna let these continue to fry for about three more minutes. You know you're getting close when the bubbles start to die down because that means most of the moisture in the breading has been boiled off in the hot fat. After about four minutes in total, I'll come back with my spider and lift out a couple of these collies to see how they're looking and feeling. The breading here feels super firm and set up and overall the color looks great. So I'm gonna move them over to a wire rack to cool down and drain while I drop the second batch into the oil. As you can see, round one looks really good. There's a tasteful amount of breading on each floret and basically none of that breading fell off in the fryer. For now, I'll lift round two out of the fryer and once I've got a full sheety of perfectly fried crispy cauliflower, it's time to bathe them in buffalo. I like to do that in smaller batches to make sure the right amount of sauce is saturating the breading. So in goes two large handfuls and then a long sensual drizzle of that savory, spicy, buttery buffalo sauce. 
To finish, I'll jump into the bowl to give everything a quick toss toss to combine, and right away, you can hear how glassy and crisp these little collie wings are. It sounds like rocks getting tossed around in a bowl. It's so brittle and so crisp. Once I've got these all sauced up, it's time to plate them up and give them a final taste. You guys, these are good not only because they're fried and covered in buffalo sauce, but also because the thing inside of them tastes delicious. It's perfectly tender, but not mushy and has a nice clean cruciferous flavor. It's almost creamy in a way and flavor wise, it really stands out against all of that fat. It's bright, it's buttery, it's spicy and it's fun. Oh, and this one looks like a little drumstick. Vegetarian or not, you guys should try this one soon. Let's eat this thing.